Hello, MCVP's Finance. I hope you are doing well. And welcome to this budgeting tool for the 21-22 term session explanation. And well, basically, uh, if you remember on the uh, MCVP Finance Summit, we introduced a new version of the budgeting tool following the new chart of accounts and also considering the new stuff that you need to take into consideration by uh, the next term and also the things that you need to plan uh, like the new products uh, the EU implementation global piloting projects etc so basically this session is to explain and introduce you better this uh, these changes so first of all let me introduce the team that uh, was part of this uh, budget actualization or update uh, the first one is Kevin Jin. He is the uh, Global Finance Board Team Member uh, inside the Knowledge Management Division. Also, he was MCP Finance of ISIC in uh, Australia during the 1920 term and also LCP Finance and TM4 um, uh, 2018 and 19 term. And he don't, doesn't like the, his time zone. Um, and basically he made this uh, session. And also, uh, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Leonardo Hurtado. Uh, you can call me Leo. Uh, I'm part of the Global Finance Board as team leader of the Knowledge Management Division. And I also, uh, I was MCP Finance for a 1920 term. And also I was the, the responsible to update the project tool. And this is why basically uh, uh, I'm delivering this video. So this, the session objectives, it's learn more about the differences between the old and the new budget tool. Understand how, why we can use the budget tool and the differences between the p and and L and the cash flow uh, plannings. Uh, also, uh, how you can uh, do the forecasting of your budget and also um, some uh, advices about how you can do a better uh, budget, budget, budgeting for the upcoming term. So first of all, uh, we want to explain uh, the definition of budget. So basically it's an estimation of the revenues expenses over a specific uh, uh, period of time, uh, we shall comply it and reevaluate in periodic basics. So basically, this is your um, financial planning uh, as the entities have, have the operational planning, uh, how many approvals, uh, realizations, etc. you want to achieve uh, during your term. Also, you need to take in consideration that you need to have a financial planning of your term. Basically, how it looks like your term in terms uh, of money. And also, this, this is something that you uh, need to have a, a good um, routine to evaluate and check the plan basis achieve how uh, you can improve your financial performance. So basically, uh, this is the tool itself. You can go uh, through this link, MC Budget Tool, and you can go and see the template. You need to make a copy and work on the on your own copy. You can you can edit uh, the template itself. So basically, uh, there is a the the budget tool. Uh, this is the first uh, sheet uh, with. It's uh, basically the introduction. You need to put the, uh, your entity, uh, your uh, contact details as uh, the MC responsible, also the, your opening balance. And then it's basically the, um, the explanation of the tool. We have the, uh, the planning sheets, uh, planning analysis, execution, and consolidation. And also there is a menu, so you can uh, basically click on each uh, cell and go directly to the uh, sheet that you want to work on it. Also, there is uh, instructions uh, for planning and also instructions for whole term. This uh, tool, it's not only for your planning. This is something that you need to use uh, during your whole term. 
So basically, uh, you can work the first uh, sheets as part of your planning, and then you can go uh, for the rest uh, to make the execution and the analysis of your plan versus achieve. So the better the budget, it's the better of your entity can execute your direction. Uh, that means uh, you need to take the time to build a better budgeting as possible and make the correct analysis, uh, have a clear direction and clear uh, goals with your uh, MC and your entity. Because uh, as I mentioned, it, this budget is also important as your operational goals because uh, the idea is to grow in, uh, in the sustainability indexes. Um, and this is uh, basically your main uh, resource that you can work on it during the rest of your time. So basically uh, you need to have a good planning of your uh, financial resources with the budget to have a correct execution and have a good direction. Then, uh, what it's in the current tool, basically uh, you can see it uh, and we remark the first uh, two parts because um, for planning, you need to focus on the first two points of this uh, um, spread, uh, spreadsheet uh, blocks. The first one is the planning sheets and the second one is the analysis. So basically, as you can see it, uh, we uh, can identify the, the blocks of, of the different uh, parts by an index and also by color. So for example, in the planning sheets, you, you can find all the sheets related with planning, related to planning with the ind index number one and also the, this uh, kind of uh, green uh, color. And then for example, the planning analysis, basically how you can uh, check how it looks like your uh, costs and revenues and cash flow plans on uh, on those um, sheets and as you can see it there had the index uh, number two and it's on color yellow so basically this is for uh, an easy way to identify uh, on each uh, sheet from which kind of block uh, it's part of so uh, that Let's take a look of the first uh, sheets uh, more closely. So we have the accrual basis and cash basis. Uh, there is uh, different and kind of confusing, but uh, there is part of the explanation. So for accrual basis, this is basically uh, your costs and revenues, and also considering your profit and loss. And then it's the cash, uh, cash flow statements uh, part, which is basically directly your, um, the money that you uh, gain or um, spend in your, uh, in your cash. So basically uh, kind of the differences can be, for example, the debt payment plans uh, or something like that, that in a basis you plan uh, or you put the number when you receive the, the, the document or the invoice, etc., and the cash basis, only you can you record the uh, when your, your money moves directly in your uh, bank account. And there is the exchange goals. So basically the first one, uh, the first sheet, it's the cost budget. So you can have, uh, every category and also subcategories. So the first one, for example, it's the ELD products, basically exchange uh, costs. So you have the block of uh, direct exchange and then it's the specific products like IGB, OGB, IGTA. All of these things are aligned with the new GFE chart of accounts. Also the costs are distributed by a monthly period of time and you need only fill the great parts of each category. So for example, the yellow cells, it's um, a formula. So only you need to fill the, the light gray cells. 
to put the number of the cost of each uh, category. And based on the new charts of accounts, we have the first uh, block, which is the exchange products, kind of the same. We have only the, the current products. We discard the, all the GTs, all products, and GEs. For example, now we have the new block, which is the EWA products. You have, there is a space for youth speak, he, hidden for the future, local volunteer, and also if you have a specific EWA initiatives, there is uh, on the last uh, block. Then we have the global piloting products, which means, uh, for example, if you are part of an AI piloting project, uh, kind of a BPP or virtual uh, products program, um, this kind of uh, of piloting projects on under uh, global implementation. There is the financial cost, which is basically your uh, taxes or bank fees, this kind of things. Entity affiliation fee uh, cost uh, at MC level, it's the um, AGI and regional offices invoices. Um, there is also the project management costs, um, which is the conference and meetings, digital engagements, portfolios, and also very important, there is also the partnership logistics. In the last uh, budget, all the things related to business development, and partnerships, et cetera, has uh, had their own uh, main category, but now it's under the project management. Also, there is a other cost, uh, overhead cost, sorry. So you, can, you have the office, uh, HR, legality planning, other marketing. Also, we now include the public relations and branding costs inside the overhead cost and not in a separate block. And the rest of the categories that usually we have under overhead costs. And the, uh, the last part, it's the others and or miscellaneous costs. Then we have the budgeting uh, revenues. Basically, uh, it's kind of the same uh, structure. So you have the categories and subcategories, the money distribution, and following the new chart of accounts. So the new accounts, it's basically kind of similar. We have the ELD or exchange revenues, the EWA revenues, global piloting product revenues, entity affiliation revenues. That means at the MC level, the money that you uh, gain from the LCs as part of the entity affiliation fees, project management. Um, also there is inside the grants donation and subsides, and also there are others and, re and miscellaneous revenues. Then once you have the costs and revenues planning, you have the profit and loss forecast. So this is part of the analysis uh, sheets. So you can see the general projection. This is something that you can uh, edit. So um, by default, it's 100%, but if you, if you want to check different scenarios, for example, if you uh, had 90% uh, of cost and 80% of revenues, how will looks like based on uh, the data that you put. There is the ELD products profit and loss, basically they change profit and loss um, individual, individually. There is also the EWA products because uh, most of the entities are moving forward to start implementing more EWA and also the project management. So you can change the projections and look at the forecast based on the different scenarios. And then uh, in the bottom of the and the analysis sheet, you can see the profit and loss forecast, and specifically the revenues uh, and cost distribution. So basically, you can see at uh, on a table when you can see the, the percentage of your contribution. For this example, you can see it uh, for exchanges. This uh, entity has planning 53.68% uh, of uh, exchange revenues and uh, 23 for EWAT, etc. And you can see more specifically per product. So this is cool because you can see the distribution of your uh, revenues and costs. 
based on the different categories following this, the new chart of accounts. And in the right part, you can see it, uh, the profit and loss forecast, but in a graphic uh, style. So it could be uh, useful for you to make analysis, analysis and comparisons. Paimon. So why we do forecast? Because we want to predict uh, how our results will look like based on uh, changing performance. Uh, also, you can have a better uh, plan, uh, be prepared for uh, challenges or issues. Also, uh, you can align your budget with your strategy goals and plans. It's okay if you found uh, it hard. When I started, I didn't know uh, any of these either. So this is something that uh, Kevin shared with us. Um, and he wants to share uh, some things that I, uh, he learned along, the, along his term. So uh, the first one, consolidate uh, the budget with your team. Uh, they were also equally responsible of this line of items to fill out, so basically, uh, if you are going to plan costs and revenues from IGB and you have obviously your MCP IGB, you need to, uh, to take the time to consolidate this budget in synergy with uh, your MCP IGB, for example, for this case, etc. So you need to um, align all your budget with your team, with your MCPs, with, uh, following the strategies, your needs, your current situation, to have a better implementation of this uh, budgeting and have a, a very good uh, plan. So budgeting is a skill that everyone should learn. So you are the MC responsible, and obviously you are the final responsible to create and deliver and track the budget implementation. But uh, that doesn't mean that your team uh, can be related or get involved with the consolidation of your budget. So also uh, spend the time to teach them how to use these resources, to see the analysis, to have a realistic scenario and have a good planning with your all your team. Also generate multiple scenarios. So uh, con considering uh, the current situation, we, right now we still are, have the COVID pandemic. So considering different scenarios, from the most optimist uh, to the most pessimist uh, scenarios, how it looks like considering the current situation of your entity in different uh, perspectives. One of them, it's obviously the COVID-19 pandemic, also uh, the current situation of your LCs, uh, the product performance, etc. cetera. So we'll, uh, we'll have play with different scenarios to have a better clarity of how it looks like your uh, project execution during uh, your uh, term. So this is, this is very important. So take care and uh, have that time to create all the forecasting stuff. Also under, understand your context. Uh, this is very important because uh, we can uh, facilitate uh, guidelines for a uh, more general uh, for to you because there is a lot of different contexts uh, around the, across a global network. So uh, I don't know. Uh, for example, the situation from ISEC in Australia it's very different than ISEC in Colombia. So uh, you need to have the clarity of the current situation of your entity. And with that, uh, all the things that you need to, to build, the incomes that you gain from the, the last terms, check the past terms budget, but also considering that you, you are in that different scenario than your predecessor. And also check the resources. There is the first one, the link to the new chart of accounts. So you can see the new changes that we had uh, in the chart of accounts. Also, there is a link to the MC budget tool and also the link for the LC budget tool. Basically, it's kind of the same, but of course, following the LC chart of accounts. And that's it from uh, our site. So thank you so much for uh, seeing this uh, session. And also in case of any doubt, you can ask to the uh, GFE Knowledge Management uh, Division. 
and be a proud financer. Thank you so much.